relationship between individuals who are close enough to, uh, to ask people into your home. A relationship with Jesus, a relationship with God, as to know one another and to be closely connected with one another. And so he says, I stand at the door, I knock, and the means by which he knocks is through his word. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 14 tells us that we are called by the message, the gospel of Christ. It is the gospel, it is the word of God that calls us to him. We are invited to have fellowship with him. And that fellowship comes from knowing his word, hearing his voice, and obeying him. Jesus wants us to have such a relationship with him, and so much so that he comes to the door and he knocks. He invites. In Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, we read that uh, great invitation that is offered by Jesus. Verse 28 through verse 30, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus invites us to come to him, to take his word, his teachings upon us, to allow that to be the yoke which guides us, not to the right hand or to the left, but directly down the road that he has called us to, to, uh, to hold, right? John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so he is the way, he is the path, he, is the, he has de, uh, given us the means by which we know how to go. He has uh, tread that path for us so that we can see it. And he has provided his word, Psalm 119, verse 105, as a light as a lamp that would guide, that, guide us down that path. And he says, come unto me, take my yoke upon you, and allow that teaching to guide us in all things that we say, in all things that we do. He invites us. He wants to have that relationship uh, with us. In fact, Paul said to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 11, he says, knowing therefore the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. We seek to convince men to convict men, to persuade men, to turn away from other paths, uh, paths like we read about in Matthew 7, verse 13 and verse 14, wide, destructive paths that lead to ways of destruction and follow the narrow way, the way which leads to life eternal. And so Paul said there is a way that leads to destruction. It's easy. It's wide. In fact, anybody can go down that wide path by doing anything they want to do. And so he says, since the end of that path is destruction, separation from God, as opposed to uh, supping with Jesus, as opposed to being in fellowship with Jesus, this wide path leads to destruction, eternal separation from God. And Paul saw the need as an inspired apostle to say, we, we do not want that to be the end of our fellow man. So we try to steer them away from such a path back to the way of Jesus on the right track, the narrow track, the way. Jesus is the way. And so he says we use the word of God to guide them back to the way, to guide them onto the path that leads to life, and we persuade men using the word of God. Jesus stands at the door and knocks. He uses men like Paul and Peter and other apostles who have written the word of God as a means to op for us to open the door to him. When we open the word of God, we are opening the door to Jesus. We are allowing his word to infiltrate our minds and our hearts and allowing his word to guide us into our life. So when Jesus, when the Bible says Jesus stands at the door and knocks, the knocking should be very loud, right? It comes from the word of God. He used inspired men to write these words for us so that we could know his mind, so that we could know his way so that we could know how to be right with him and in fellowship with him. And so when we do that, we hear his word and we obey it, we uh, find ourselves in fellowship with God. And we find ourselves in a situation where we are connected with Jesus, we are connected with God. When we read the word of God and we 
uh, have that relationship with God, with Jesus, through hearing his word and taking his yoke upon our necks and allowing the word to guide us into the right path and the right way, we are separating ourselves from the world. 1 Peter 3, verse 15, Peter says, Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and in fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. On, the only way that we can have that good behavior, that good conversation that is in fellowship with Jesus is to be in Christ. And, if, and that re, uh, requires us to separate ourselves through sanctification, through hearing the word of God and obeying it. That sanctification includes hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, Romans 10 verse 17, but then acting upon it, repenting of our past sins, Luke 13 verse 3. Confessing that Jesus is the Christ, uh, the only way to salvation, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. And being baptized into his body, into his death. Allowing the blood that was shed in his death to wash away our sins. Uh, Acts 22, verse 16, Revelation 1, verse 5. God adds those individuals to his church, the body, where we are in fellowship with Jesus because of our response to his word. He knocked by means of the word. He knocked by means of these inspired men. And we opened the door when we opened his word of God and allowed the, the word, the seed, Luke 8, 11, to penetrate our minds and our hearts so that we might do it and be in fellowship with him, sup with him, uh, as the, uh, John says in Revelation 3. And so in the end... We have fellowship with God through hearing his word and being uh, obedient to it. We also note here that the, this great invitation here that we read in Revelation chapter 3 is one of uh, mercy. It is one of love. It is one of compassion. It is one of humility. Revelation chapter 3. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him. It's important to note here that, the, that it is a choice of man to determine whether or not we open the door. Uh, Jesus does not come with a, uh, a sledgehammer to knock the door down. And a lot of people want Jesus to just knock the door down and come in and make himself uh, at home uh, with us without any studying of the Word of God, without ever opening up the Word of God, without any uh, uh, in-depth understanding of the Word of God, and without any obedience to the Word of God. And a lot of the religious world sees religion like that, that Jesus knocks the door down, that the Holy Spirit knocks the door down when Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. You get to choose whether you open the door to Jesus. And a lot of people shut the door on Jesus. A lot of people never open the door on Jesus. They ask for Jesus to come to them. He knocks and they never open. But Jesus is merciful. He's ever, his mercy is ever abundant. Uh, and of course that mercy and that lively hope that we read about comes by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, both Hebrews 6, 19 and following, and 1 Peter 1, verse 3, where the Bible tells us that uh, he has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. How it is the case that man can have all things that pertain to life and godliness and shut the door on it. They don't want to know the, uh, the, the whole truth. They don't want to know the whole counsel of God. They want Jesus to come with a sledgehammer and knock the door down. Make himself, uh, make his abode in our minds and our hearts without our having to choose. But Jesus doesn't do that. He invites, he knocks, he, he welcomes the opportunity to come in and to be with us through his word, through his yoke. But it is our responsibility, it is our obligation to choose whether we will open the door, keep the door closed, or shut the door on Jesus. Jesus has never forced himself into the heart of any man. Never. 
But he does gently knock, and he calls, and he asks, let me come in and make my abode with you. But we have to choose to open the door by hearing his word, reading his word, studying his word, and then ultimately obeying the word. It is our choice as to whether the door is open. And J Jesus waits for our response, but the, the wait will not last forever. There will, come a door, the, there will come a day when the door won't be knocked upon anymore because the end will come. There will be a day when Jesus comes in the air to judge the quick and the dead. And we will be called together in the air with those who uh, have died and buried in the ground and those who are alive will all be called together uh, in a spiritual body to be judged by Jesus. Jesus will not forever knock on the door. The day, there will be a day when uh, we will have had to have made our decision. And so it's important that we don't wait too long. It's important that we don't uh, allow Jesus to knock and to call uh, while we simply do not respond and do not answer. A non-response is an answer. If we don't open the door, the answer is we do not want Jesus. If we don't hear his word, the answer is we do not want Jesus to come in and make his abode with us. If the answer is we're, we're not going to listen to the knock, we've, uh, we've tuned the knocking out as far as hearing the word of God and listening and studying the word of God, a lot of people don't hear the word of God knocking uh, because they've toned that out. They've tuned that out. They have other things ringing in their ear that's louder than the knock. Individuals get to choose how they prioritize life, right? And of course, those who prioritize living for Jesus and hearing his word and obey will open the door and allow Jesus through his word to come in and make his abode uh, with us. When we hear his word and we know his word, it's the word that leads us and guides us uh, towards the direction that we want to go. But not only is Jesus standing at the door, the world's at the door too. <laughs> now a lot of people open the door to the world. They love what the world has to offer. In Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, God makes an interesting statement with regard to the response of both Abel and Cain. In Genesis chapter 4, uh, we read in verse 1, Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she, began, uh, she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that uh, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So from this small bit of text, we understand that uh, man was to present some sort of sacrifice to God based on this text in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, I think it's fair for us to understand especially when we look at the law of Moses too, though this was prior to the law of Moses, that God expected uh, a lamb or something of the flock because when Abel brought uh, an offering from uh, the firstling of his flock, God accepted it. And Cain brought of the fruit of the ground, which God did not accept. And we understand that God accepts those things that he authorizes and commands. Abel was accepted and respected because he did what God said to do. Cain, on the other hand, offered something to God, but it wasn't what God authorized or commanded. And we know that based on verse 6, because the Bible says the Lord spoke to Cain after this uh, situation where Cain was upset and wroth and angry and we can suppose that he was angry uh, that God did not accept his sacrifice. He wasn't angry at himself, which would have been a more honest answer to his response, right? He should have been mad at himself for not offering God what God authorized. 
But he said, uh, the Lord says, why art thou wroth? So God didn't expect him to be angry at him. He said, why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, in other words, if you do what you're told to do, if you obey the commands of God, you also will be accepted. Shalt thou not be accepted? In other words, God gave the rule, the command by which man could be accepted, even in the very beginning. And of course, even prior to this, uh, God gave a command whereby Adam and Eve could be accepted, and they broke that rule too. And if thou doest not well, notice what he says to Cain. Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Many individuals knock, hear the knock of sin, hear the knock of the world, and open the door to it. Cain here heard the knock of doing what he wanted to do as a means of an offering, and that's what he responded to. Abel heard the knock of the Lord by hearing what he had commanded and authorized as a means of sacrifice, and he answered to it. Two different knocks. God knocked on both doors, but the world knocked too. Abel responded to Jesus. Abel responded to God's knocking. He heard what he said to do and he obeyed it. Cain responded to the world. Sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. And of course we know that Cain did not respond to that uh, very well as, uh, as well. He, uh, he ended up killing his brother Abel. And of course uh, that showed Cain's heart was in the wrong place all along. But as Jesus stands and knocks at the door and says, listen to me, hear me, I have the words of eternal life, I have the words that can guide you to heaven, the world also knocks and says, look what we have to offer. Look at the great thing. We, we can offer everything that God doesn't allow, right? In other words, you can bring any sacrifice you want. And Cain accepted that. You can bring any sacrifice you want. You can do anything you want to do and call it worship, the world says. You can do anything. You don't even have to worship, the world says. You can simply uh, please self and do whatever the world would tell you to do. Remember Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. And remember, we talked about the invitation, that call, that knocking is because Jesus is merciful. He wants us to follow him. He wants to be in fellowship with us. Because he knows not being in fellowship with us is destructive. So Paul begged and he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. The mercy of God is extended, but do we accept it? Abel accepted it. Cain did not. So the begging that Paul says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and unblemished. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to the world. Sin lieth at the door. It knocks. <laughs> Many answer to the world. right? They follow that wide path of whatever they want to do ultimately. Cain answered the door to the wrong person. He, he answered the world uh, the door to the world, to sin, to his desires over God's. And God told him, I would not have been wroth with you had you obeyed. Obedience is what God requires. Uh, listening and hearing the word of God is necessary in order for us to obey. Without the word of God, that knocking, we don't know how to uh, uh, be right with God. In 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, Verse 12, John says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake, speaking to Christians who had obeyed the gospel and had their sins washed away. He says, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning, I have written unto you young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. 
the emphasis here is in the repetition. Why he wrote. John was knocking. <laughs> he was an inspired knocker. And he said, this is why I've written. And of course, in John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, he said, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe and that believing you might have life in his name. He said, I write these things that the word of God abide in you and overcome the wicked one. So Jesus knocks. The wicked one knocks. The world knocks. Verse 15, John says, love not the world. You know, who you open the door to is who you want to hear. <laughs> who you open the door to is who you love. Love not the world. The world leads to destruction. The ways of the world lead to separation from God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Those are the ways that the world knocks. You can have everything you want. You can do anything you want. Please yourself. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't open the door to the world and expect Jesus to come in and have fellowship with you. Jesus is not going to come in and fellowship with the devil. And if we open the door to the world, if we open the door uh, to sin, if we open the door to the love of the world, the Bible says the love of the Father is not in him. We've chosen. We've made a choice. We open the door to the world. Uh, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Those things that tempt us are of the world, and boy, do they knock. Do they not? All the temptations of the world knocking on our door, wanting us to hear and to listen to their plea, and to, and to draw us out or to draw them into our homes or into our hearts and our minds. John says, the, word, the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So we have to make a choice. The world knocks. Jesus says, don't love the world. The world only leads to destruction and, and uh, a, a state of being lost and separate from God. And so we open the door to who we want to hear. Do we want to hear the word of God and be saved by it? Do we want to hear the world tell us that we can do whatever we want? It's just fine and we follow it. In chapter 4 of 1 John, verse 1, beginning, John says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. They knock on the door too. <laughs> right? The world knocks. It's me, your friend. It's me. I'm your best friend. I'll let you do whatever you want to do. God says, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So there are those in the world who say, Do whatever you want to do physically. The lust of the eyes, pride of life, the lust of the flesh. And then there are false teachers who say, You can do anything you want religiously. God says, Don't listen to them. Don't. You need to try the spirits to see if they are of God. Hereby, verse 2, know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, you open the door to Jesus, than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. <coughs> Did you notice that? They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. They have fellowship, communication one with another. They're going through the same door. As opposed to... Verse 6, we are of God. We opened a different door. <laughs> we allowed Jesus to come into our hearts through means of the word. We heard it, we believed it, we obeyed it. And it says, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Why? They don't open the door. They could hear the apostles. They could hear the word of God by opening his word. But they don't hear the word. They hear the world. 
They've opened the wrong door. They've opened the, the door to the world. They hear the world. They hear the false prophets. They hear what they choose to hear, but they don't hear the inspired word of God. They have the opportunity to know it. They have the opportunity to open the door, but they choose not to. And he said, so it's, we are of God because you hear us. We hear him. And you hear us because you open the door. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And so we have the ability to distinguish who at the door is standing. <laughs> is it the word of God? Is it the word of men? Is it the Christ? Is it the false prophets, the false teachers? Is it the way of the Lord? Is it the way of the world? Both stand at the door, and we have a choice to whom to make our abode, to make our fellowship with. There's someone else at the door. We're on the other side of the door, but it's us. <laughs> right? So Jesus is on the outside of the door knocking. The world is on the outside of the door knocking. And then there's us. And we stand at the door. And we have a choice. Do we open the door to Jesus? Do we open the door to the world? Each of us is standing on the other side of the door. And we have an opportunity to hear the word of God and to believe it and obey it. Or we have an opportunity to open the door to the world and participate in the sin that lieth at the door. Jesus said he came not into the world to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. At some point in our lives we were not Christians and we had to hear the word of God and believe it to obey it in order to have our sins washed away. We had to repent of our sins. Jesus knocked because he knew we needed salvation. He came to seek and to save the lost. Luke 19, verse 10. In Revelation 3, where our text began, just prior to his invitation, verse 19, before we read, I stand at the door and knock, Jesus said in verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Jesus calls upon us to repent, to turn away from the ways of the world, to turn away from the sins uh, that have separated us from God. Be zealous and repent. And so to the Christian who has obeyed the gospel, it is possible to fall away, but, the, but we can still hear the Lord knocking. These individuals had heard the Lord knocking, opened the door to him, but then they shut him out again. Jesus said, I'm still knocking. I want to be with you, but you have to repent. Turn away. And he says, as many as I love, I rebuke, I reprove, I chasten by means of the word, by means of these inspired writers, and by means of our brothers and sisters in Christ when we study with one another. And of course, the faithful Christian hears the knock, be faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Revelation 2, verse 10. There are those around us who are knocking, and we hear their knocks. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You and I get to knock at doors through our, mean, through our example. When people see the light that is in our life, the example that is our life, they hear knocking. They hear us calling them through means of our obedience. The Lord uses us. To call others through means of our example. And of course through the teaching of the word as we are doing here today. The knocks of the one who is actually teaching. You'll remember that uh, Paul reasoned of righteousness and self-control and the judgment to come. And the Bible said Felix trembled and said go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season I will call for thee. The word of God, the teaching of the Lord was knocking and he sent the knocking away. And of course, when we study the word of God, 2 Timothy 2.15, we show that we are rightly dividing the word of truth, that we are, uh, that we are 
made to be in his likeness. That we are being the people that God would have us to be through study, through diligent study. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we stand on the other side and we hear the knocks and we uh, get to choose. And so the response, the question is, how will we respond to the knocks? Do we say yes? Do we say no? To whom do we say yes? To whom do we say no? And then do we use our example and our ability to teach to call others to the Christ through the knocks of teaching the Word of God? If, if any of this message has brought to light anything that we here need to repent of or if we need any assistance uh, from one another, we're here to invite you to come as we stand and sing.